Clark, let's start with where most of these CEOs came from, companies before they took on their CEO jobs. You found that about one in four had worked at either Yahoo, Google, Microsoft, and then there was a tie between eBay and Facebook. Uh, but Yahoo, more than any other company, has been the source for tech CEOs. About 9% of these folks came from there. What did you make of that number? Well, I think it's where the grounding comes from. It's, it's interesting as the world shifts and it's much more digital. Russell Reynolds saw that, that the academies that used to be GE and other places are really these, these tech companies out west that are, that are forming the CEOs of today. So Yahoo by far, Microsoft, Facebook, and really Apple, which many people ask us about, was really only 2%, of a smaller amount than you'd imagine. Why do you think that is? Why do you think Apple wasn't at the top of the list when it's you know, the most powerful company on the planet these days? I think a couple of things. I think uh, companies go through cycles. This is a place, as you might call them, academies to train people. And typically, when in, as an entrepreneur-led company, as it was, people are very excited. They're fired up to be there. They're not yet moving on to run another uh, company. As there's transition and people have become more senior, they probably start becoming CEOs of other companies. All right, let's talk about the degrees. Emily was just chatting about that. 13% either attended Harvard or Stanford. I don't know if that includes Harvard dropouts, but what did you think of that number? I was shocked. I would have thought it was a much wider spread. Even more amazing is the cluster that the CE, the uh, Ivy League alone had 20% just within the Ivy League and 14 of Harvard and Stanford. If you added Berkeley, 25% of CEOs either went to Ivy League schools, Stanford or Berkeley. An amazing concentration. And also, hmm. more interesting is what they studied. You'd think it'd be computer engineering. Fortune, Fortune 500 CEOs typically have engineering backgrounds. These are economics first, computer science, not surprisingly, and then engineering yeah. behind that. Uh, that makes sense. Let's talk about where the next generation of CEOs are coming from. Because you're finding that anybody who's got some digital backgrounds, pretty broad term, right. uh, is getting calls to be a CEO. Tell us more about that. Yeah, I think that because there's so much transformation going on, and it's not just technology. For us, what's most interesting is the healthcare and the retailers are going to the digital world, to the tech companies, particularly with digital, mm. to recruit them as chief executives. So if you, uh, you look a little bit in retailing, it was merchants and store operators. Now, because it's multi-channel, you've got to have a catalog, you've got to walk in a store, and you've got to go through the shopping online. Massive right. technology uh, needs to become a CEO. Same in healthcare. So this transition. All right. Before we go, the yep. most common name for these tech CEOs, <laughs> David. David. Uh, in fact, if, if, you're, if, if you've got the name David, uh, you're more likely to be a CEO than if you've got a degree from what? Cornell, Columbia, MIT. There are the other names. Michael, John. Uh, any science behind that? I don't know. I don't think so, but there might be some name changes coming up in the next couple of years.